So, and then, you know, we may have to uh, continue this at a later point, but nonetheless, for starters, man, welcome. Thanks for, uh, for being here, brother. Appreciate having me. Appreciate yeah. you having me. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So uh, I figured we'd just go ahead and start with getting to know you a little bit since a lot of the viewers aren't going to be familiar necessarily. So give us some of your background, maybe, you know, in terms of your fighting experience and training and things. Just take us on back. Sure. Yeah. I've been wrestling my whole life ever since I was a little kid with the older brothers back in the backyard and learned uh, karate watching Kung Fu theater, as you do, Saturday as any morning. young boy does. <laughs> And uh, it was always a fighter spirit, but it was always the kind of guy that would pick, you know, pick on the bullies. And uh, it was the little guy, so I was always getting bullied, you know, perhaps. Mm. And I uh, had, had older brothers to kick my ass and put, put me down and had younger brothers always trying to catch up. So I was right in the middle, you know, and had the best <laughs> of uh, training. So ever since I was a young kid, was always a fighter, wrestler. And then, uh, you know, wrestled through college, made All-American in high school and, you know, was able to start as a D1 wrestler and took that and kind of hit a little bit of a plateau. Didn't really know what was going on. Just kind of was like, I guess it was it. And then I just, at the age of 30, started fighting. I didn't want to get too old to say I could have done that. Okay. And, uh, you know, just surrounded myself with some of the best in the world, fought daily with some of the best in the world and made it to the height of where my body would take me. And then, you know, realized that it was probably best to save some of the brain cells for the kids. And, uh, but okay. yeah. I, yeah. So that's a little bit of the history what stage in your life, you know, kind of yeah. influences your training direction and what your goals are and things and what your body is built for. Yeah. So you've run the whole gamut. Um, of external arts from external you know from wrestling early on and also you know messing around as we did when we were younger just yes. doing everything now i remember it, actually you and i would uh would get together way back when you were wrestling in high school and i was just really starting to get into mma myself and yeah. of course you know had been previously training in taekwondo and some jeet kundo and things like that um, and so we would get together and sort of pit these different styles. And, yes. Uh, level us up, getting us back. You know, speaking of that, I do recall my first cage fight. Uh, you were the referee. And my <laughs> older sister, our older sister, you know, in between us was Colleen and me versus Colleen in the, in the cage of death. So UFC started way before anyone else knew about it. It was in yeah, our that, that was prior to the UFC. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were very creative back then. So <laughs> we, had, we had to figure out something to do. Yes. Nonetheless. And, uh, and of course, you know, having been interested in fighting and martial arts, we try to figure out ways in which we could, you know, practice without, hopefully getting into too much trouble. Yeah. That's what we had the, uh, the neighbor friends over before. Uh, yes. Trouble. yes. I can remember more than a few uh, elbows off the top rope, which AKA the couch. <laughs> <laughs> so any, in any case you have, um, you have uh, been trans. Mid, uh, like sort of transferring over to more internal arts training in the last couple of years, right? Uh, again, we've kind of linked back up more and more as uh, training partners. And yeah, yeah, uh, definitely one of the things I wish I had while I was in my heyday of fighting and wrestling was some of this stuff. I had a little bit of knowledge of some of these more internal arts and I did apply them those little bits, but just an absolute microcosm of what the possibilities are with it. And that's what I really wish I would have had that kind of included. I was always very good with my body, you know, very good with controlling my body, very good 
understanding what I needed to do or where my body needed to be. And so I had a natural um, taking on for, for the internal arts. It was already there, but I really wish I had more understanding of what of what it was back then. I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't change a thing now, but still, I feel like it, it would have really helped me. Yeah. So the internal body awareness or the, what are they, you know, they call the, the sort of kinesthetic body awareness um, or yeah. pro- proprioception, aware of your body and space and things like this. Very helpful yeah. in uh, in the internal arts as well, the training. Um, but what do you think would have been useful to have had some experience with or have developed in terms of having like the Tai Chi Chuan, um, oh, yeah. some of that skill? that you're working to develop now um what would have benefited you what what would have been you know key definitely grounding for sure because if you're properly grounded you're an immovable force you know and if you understand that idea alone you can take someone right to the ground or just protect yourself in a way by grounding your hip first and understanding how it goes to your to your foot or you don't have to give up something to block someone else. You can go right into their energy and just block and ground your power. And, you know, it's it's pretty cool. So that, and I always had an idea. I'm not sure if this was something we had talked about um, anytime with the Tai Chi. I, I know, but the understanding of like, I don't know, I know we've talked about this before, but the iron curtain, like the entire body becoming this connected uh, sheet of iron, it feels like. I don't know. You know this is, so I'm obviously still very new compared to some of the top level people like yourself on it. But well, having that iron connection, yeah, I, I say top level, level person, you, but you, yeah, you um, say that there's people way above your understanding. And I believe that. But yeah, iron. So what you're, I think what you're referring to is like the iron shirt. Yeah, but I I always had this understanding that the iron shirt was like the entire body, really. So not just up here. There are methods of training that are iron shirt techniques, which are kind of uh, using, you know, abuse in a way, right? Like consistently hammering away at the body in a specific manner to build up this toughness. Okay. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of these different, many, many different techniques in the iron shirt training and in the system that we've been studying, right. Sifu Meisner's, um, I'll put a link for anyone who wants to learn more about that in the description. Uh, but he doesn't train with the iron shirt techniques. He's working to get a different outcome. Okay. And the reason as far as I understand is that the iron shirt training was more for warriors. So they needed to get these people quickly ready to do battle and be able to take, you know, a lot of hits and things and still maintain uh, the ability to continue and fight on, but they were expendable, right? We need them ready fast. We need them hardened and ready and ready for battle. But this isn't the way that let's say the royalty uh, trains, the royalty is training for longevity. Right. They want to have skill. They want to have uh, strength and they want to have incredible power and things, but they need to have that longevity. They can't be abusing their bodies in order to get it. So the training is very specific in a way that strengthens the body immensely and does create this suit uh, that you're talking about. But the suit is made of a pliable form of steel, we could say, almost like a steel mesh, you know, with connecting up the fascia the tissues in that way and so that makes that makes a lot of sense because my i mean i've known about this idea for since back in the day so i established it so i did so that might have been the little bit of knowledge i had about the internal arts back in the day was that like but yeah i guess it's hard you're you're much better explaining it but having the iron shirt now is, is not like yeah not trying to intense training to just toughen up the exterior of the body but to have that flow uh the kinetic flow of energy yeah and then you could always apply it when you need it 
So as far, I, as far as I can also say directly a little bit from my own experience, you know, is that as the suit connects up more and more, it's leak, it's filling the leaky holes of the structure, which is actually like the, the container or one of the main containers of the chi is going to be your, your fascial web. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so if that is disconnected in places, then that's going to create leaks in the, in the system. So the chi will not gather and build. And so the first initial phases, the first, you know, three, five, 10 years or what have you of the training is mainly just connecting up this suit so that it can actually hold the chi that we're also working to build. Mm -hmm. um, and so then, so then when we have this happening, then we can potentiate waves through that fascial web, you know, so the, because there's a, uh, an amount of fullness so there's chi in there and it's connected and it's contained to a degree. And so the waves can propagate through that fluid. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the ways that mm -hmm. the power is generated. Uh, speaking of that, um, would that type of power, do you think, which is, you know, we, we'll talk about, we talk about like the fa jin power is, is one of the uh, jins, one of the powers that gets expressed in the art. Um, at various levels as well. You know, there are definitely various levels of the Fajin. Um, but would that type of power be useful, do you think, in a cage fight, in an MMA situation? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's interesting because I was just thinking, I was watching the Olympic wrestling, similar, you know, similar type of fight structure you're going to need for a cage fight, uh, especially with Greco-Roman because you're all upper body. You know, so it's like the two different kind of things. So, but it was interesting because I was watching some of these moves in slow motion and noticing. So that was another point of like, and you were asking me before of like, what about, what are some of the things you would think could have been useful in your fighting days? And another thing, another point to that would be structure, like the structure of the body, right? So I'm watching these elite level wrestlers, world-class wrestlers and breaking it down in slow motion. I'm, I'm like, oh, look at him now. He's his yow is completely open at this point, you know, like the, watching the slow motion of how, how these people are, are moving and just seeing it like they don't know what they're doing necessarily, but I'm seeing it in some of the most world-class elite, you know, and if they just knew a little bit of this, it would, I feel like they, their abilities would be, they're already at the top of the world, but still be pretty much untouchable. So, uh, yeah. Would it help? I think so. So there is the also now the question of how how much is like Tai Chi, for instance, like wrestling? Is it just uh, a heightened way of structuring the body and aligning? Yeah. Things? Well, I think there's just moments. There's moments in wrestling that are like that could that Tai Chi could just just blow it out the water. So, and I always study these things. So like, you know, like playing paper, rock, scissors, right? When you play paper, rock, scissors, let's do that with martial arts. You got wrestling, boxing, and jujitsu. So wrestling beats boxing, boxing beats jujitsu, jujitsu beats wrestling. But there's moments in all of these forms where Tai Chi would actually, I guess in reality, Tai Chi, if, if you really master Tai Chi, it would kind of beat all of those and, in certain things maybe not boxing yeah maybe not boxing <laughs> <laughs> unless you just had you could just spring power into every punch against so them but i think the um the point you're making though leads to this understanding that what is going on in tai chi at a high level at least right higher than what i'm capable of necessarily um is something different than what's going on in these other arts, yeah. right? Yeah. They develop these certain skill sets and techniques, right? Very specific to their art. And, you know, they clash in certain ways and uh, some will tend to dominate others, but they're definitely very effective and things. Whereas you wouldn't think that, you know, just moving slowly with your body, like let's say, would be <laughs> of much use against anything like that. Um, but what it's working to develop is this quality, first and foremost, of fullness, let's say, 
mm. um, and connection, which is a result of very, very specific training, just in the same way that those others are training, except it is not the external training that those other arts undergo, like the, the weightlifting, the stretching, the, you know, continuous punching over and over again, the combinations and things, the working, the various techniques and building your skill set. All of that is secondary in Tai Chi. In Tai Chi, you have to change your body and being to be a different animal. And the thing is, and, and also in my experience, what I usually tend to see is that people with a very high skill have changed their being in such a way as to be very um, well, generally peaceful people, I would say. Yep. Uh not not combative, maybe may very opinionated maybe very certain and confident and things um but not generally combative mm. uh which kind of you know lends itself to the um you know the statistics that there aren't really many people representing the art of tai chi in mma let's say for a number yeah. of other reasons as well, right? It takes a long, long time to develop any skill like that. Um, but as you said, probably certain aspects of the training along the way could be helpful, could be useful as like adjuncts to the training. But we have to look at the goals. The goal of the MMA fighters to be able to go in that cage and destroy his opponent or at the very least outclass him, you know? Yeah. Um, whereas... The goal of Tai Chi is something very, very different. It's about transforming your being into, you know, something that is more aligned with the, the essential being, the essentially what you are, right? The, where we yeah. come from, the source of intelligent, aware life essence that we emanate from to really get to know that and learn to embody it on such a deep level that we really become it and it, it get to express it and liberate ourselves in that way. So it, the, the aims are very, very different. Absolutely. It's interesting. Cause I was just uh, thinking about that. Like, so what the aims of, Tai Chi would be in a case of defending yourself would be to, you know, eliminate the threat without trying to destroy the threat necessarily. Right. Be like ward off and hit him with something, you know, blast power without, you know, but without trying to necessarily destroy the person. But then what do you do if you're in a situation where you have to, you, you know, you're going to use that get your family to protect you know? <laughs> and Tai Chi blast this shit out of this motherfucker. I'm sorry. Excuse my language. <laughs> so, well, yeah, then, well, then we have to train. So we, I think that it's important to have the external training to yeah. have a backbone and a fundamental. Um, if you're interested in self-defense, let's say for sure. And at the same time, when you've developed that to a degree or alongside your interest in internal arts, as the Tai Chi training, let's say, becomes more primary as your, you know, as your aim and your goal, then you can also still aim for developing many jins through the training, including the killing jin. As you oh, never, no. you never know when you might need it. <laughs> Zombie apocalypse or something like that, as uh, you know, my friend Curtis says. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry, it's meeting crept up on me pretty quick. I got this thing coming up, but that's I want to continue. That's this. a perfect um, spot to pause things for now, and uh, still have a lot of 
topics I want to unearth around this. But um, yeah, appreciate you jumping on and. Oh yeah, brother. It's great. I'll be catching you soon, my man. Thanks so much. All right, brother. Brother. I All love right. you, man. I'll love you too. Back soon. Right. Peace. Peace. Later.